Crowfall is an upcoming massively multiplayer online role-playing real-time strategy game developed by Artcraft. It is described as a throne war simulator. The origins of this game began with a Kickstarter campaign back in 2015, with a target of $800,000. They smashed their target and hit a massive 1.7 million. Since then, the game has been under development and has had a number of betas so far, and is apparently scheduled for release on August 11th, providing there are no delays. I recently spent some time in one of the closed beta events, and so far I'm both very impressed and slightly disappointed at the same time. In this video I'll tell you about my experience with the game, the classes and races available to play, the game systems you'll be jumping into. I'll tell you how this game could either make it big, or become a huge failure, which would be a shame because from what I've seen so far, the bones of the game could make this really interesting to play and be unlike anything else. Where Crowfall differs from more traditional MMOs is the game's world system. There will be five different types of worlds, also known as campaigns. The worlds are called Eternal Kingdoms, God's Reach, The Infected, The Shadow and Dregs, each with a different set of rules. Each world will be procedurally generated and will go through a cycle of life and death, starting with spring to summer, fall and ending with winter. At the end of the winter the campaign ends and the world is gone forever, though the players will remain allowed to travel to other worlds. Campaigns can last for one, three or six months up to a year. The only worlds that don't die are the Eternal Kingdoms where the player housing is located. So when you first start the game you'll be given the option to create your first character. There are an impressive 12 races to choose from including things like the Fae, Minotaur, Centaur or Half Giant. The races in this game really impressed me right off the bat and I was very keen to try Minotaur which was always my favourite story from Greek mythology as a child. Next you pick your starting class and again there are an impressive 11 classes to start you off. Classes are locked to various races so you won't be able to pick a wood elf knight for example or a half giant templar but thankfully there is no restriction on the gender you pick for your character. You won't be locked down to one gender or another depending on the class or race. I've always hated gender lock when creating a character to play. The level cap as things stand is 30 and you'll have a lot of different ways to build your character by picking talent from talent trees as you level up and also by buying or finding major or minor runes which you can slot into your character build and give you additional passive bonuses. There are far too many skills and specialisations available for you to unlock and apply to your character by the time you finish levelling up. You won't be able to get every skill, so you'll need to pick carefully based on how you want to play. There is a way to respec your character if you wish to rebuild them however, so you can feel free to play around with different skill combinations. When you start out your playthrough, the game feels a lot like World of Warcraft initially, aside from a few key things. First of all, you have to pick a world to start your journey on. Each of these forms a different purpose. The starter worlds are intended for you to begin your initial journey and level up, learning the game systems as you go. You will be given quests to collect things or kill enemies, much like you would in World of Warcraft or many other MMOs you might think of. You'll begin to level up and expand your abilities. You'll be able to port back to the main town to hand in quests and set off to find the next area to quest in. You get the idea. But here is where things start to deviate from the regular path you might expect. At around level 8 you'll be given access to your first mount which is pretty early in my experience with similar games. From there you'll begin to encounter quests which will involve building or fortifying towns, moving crafting materials from one place to another but with a purpose beyond that of simply completing a quest. Crafting seems to play a big part in this game. You'll be given access to skinning, mining, woodcutting and a number of other crafting abilities. From there you can begin to specialise in one or another of these and begin to contribute to your forts, strongholds or towns capabilities and also your own individual character progress. At around level 17, after around 3 hours of gameplay, I was advised by a quest giver that the time for me to join another world had come, thrusting me into the PvPVE elements of the game. I was pushed to jump into a faction versus faction world to begin testing out my prowess against other players and contributing to my faction. By this point I had unlocked a number of talents in my talent tree, both active and passive. I'd also unlocked and picked my first major rune which granted me additional passives based on the playstyle I was going for. At the start of a new campaign, be it faction or guild based, players will spawn into the newly created world during spring, filled with villagers, mines, gatherable resources and ruins. The world map is clouded by the fog of war, meaning players will have to explore to discover its geography. With the resources they gather, players will be able to craft weapons and build castles and fortresses for defence against other players and the wildlife. As summer begins, resources become more scarce and the world's monsters become more and more powerful. This continues with each season, 
The force behind doing this is called the hunger in the game's lore, which makes the game world harder to survive as time goes on. The PvP element comes into play more as resources become more scarce, and you're obviously forced to fight it out to lock down what remains, as well as fighting off increasingly tougher NPC enemies out in the world. This is unfortunately where the cracks started to show and where the game has a definite weakness to consider, which I guess will be no surprise to you or to the developers. So let me jump into a few criticisms and I hope that both you guys and the devs will take this as constructive. I'll cover the concerns and then I'll circle back to why I'm still excited for this game on release. I understand that I've been playing on a beta test, so there are elements of the game which are missing, imperfect or still incomplete. This is not a flat out critique or review as that would be unfair, but I guess you could say that these are my concerns from what I've observed so far. Right now there don't seem to be enough NPC enemies to make this game entertaining if you're playing solo, at least initially. I don't know if the realms I've been playing on are going to be representative of the final game, but if you add more players to each world when the game releases, then the NPCs may become scarce very quickly unless the populations are balanced accordingly. Respawn time has seemed good, but if you add in a few hundred or thousand people vying for the same outcomes, then this could become problematic. The NPC chieftains of towns or forts are very tough, impossible to take down with only one or two players present. On top of that, the real pull of the game seems to hinge on the intense PvP battles and the changeable worlds which will be dictated by the player actions. So this brings me to the real concern. The population. When I played for a few hours yesterday there was a healthy population and everything seemed to be running smoothly. But when I logged in earlier today, perhaps I picked a bad time, but I saw what the world will look like without the players and it's pretty sparse and empty, with very little that can be done solo. The game, as things stand, looks to be entirely dependent on having an active and balanced player base. Without that, I was unable to solo a town chieftain, which at the time I thought was entirely within my level range. I managed to find another player and between the two of us we still got battered. So the town chiefs are clearly considered to be bosses, or mini bosses at least. But without other players the game very quickly became unplayable. I really do have high hopes for Crowfall. I'm glad that this will be a buy to play title rather than free to play with microtransaction model. My hope is that the team will launch a huge marketing campaign when the game launches to bring in the player population. If they can deliver on this then I expect the game could do really well. The bones of the game, the classes, races, talent trees, the augmentations all felt great. The crafting and the player controlled worlds, the promise of massive PvP battles and minor PvP skirmishes for territory and resources which will genuinely impact the outcome of worlds and the worlds will exist for up to a year. All of this sounds amazing and having played the game myself I can see how this could really work but you need the players and you need to balance the populations on each world otherwise the entire house of cards will fall flat. I have high hopes and I'll definitely be checking in on Crowfall again in the future to see how things are progressing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is this the game you're excited for? Have you played the BT yourself and what was your experience like? Leave me a like and comment before you go if you don't mind. Sub if you're new and I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for watching. Take care, stay safe. Bye bye now.